No kid dreams of growing up to be a mortgage loan officer. Hey, is now an okay time? Hey, we've done everything we can. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Didn't work out. I think you dream of being like a firefighter or a doctor or something like that, but just not a loan officer. They're hard battles to overcome, and I know we're so close. When I was growing up, I wanted to be an ER doctor. The title company is going to do that because we don't close until further on in the, in the week. Nobody grows up wanting to be a loan officer. But I get to help people with arguably the biggest financial decision of their life. I get to help people with their emotions. But this was introduced to me and it became my career and I'm happy about that. I'm happy that it fell on my lap. But getting into the mortgage business, we get to help families to have that white picket fence. And how cool is that, that a kid from the projects gets to do this every day? During one of the most difficult downturns in the history of the mortgage industry, three originators from around the country fought to navigate this challenging season. We followed them on their journeys. I feel like it's very important to put a deadline. Short window. They were we expecting that. No califica con lo tradicional. Okay. He wants to set up a meeting with an investor. Yo, it doesn't work that way. Can you call them and find out when they'll be reporting? The name of my team is the 3M Group. So it's for the three Martinez sisters, Jessica, Hassel, and myself. Jessica and I both originate. Hassel handles our business development marketing. We've got Jen Raj. She is a loan partner with us, loan originator as well. Leah also, she's our production manager. Our parents are from Mexico. We grew up in a border town called Nogales. We lived on the Mexican side for some time, and we then moved on to the Arizona side and grew up going to American schools. Do you are part of the Hispanic chamber? No. I was 19 years old, and I was working a retail job, and I met a gentleman with his wife and kid that came into the shop. I was speaking to them in Spanish, going back and forth with people, I think, in English, and he said, I'm a loan officer. I think he was looking for somebody that spoke Spanish. Obviously, probably somebody that was good maybe with customer service and, and you know, we hit it off. Like I was playing with his son and I was helping him and I was going back and forth from helping other clients. And so, you know, just something, just something sparked, I guess. He offered like $13 an hour and plus like a bonus per file. And I mean, my eyes were like <laughs> just beaming because I felt that was a lot more than I was currently making. And I was working two full-time jobs. So I politely said yes. And here I am, you know, 21 years later, and still doing it. This is Erica. Uh, look at Jessica. <laughs> and once again, I'm from the Milkman. <laughs> In Mexican culture, family is everything. The Martinez sisters live near each other. Their husbands are friends. Their children play. And tonight, they all gather at Jessica's to celebrate Mother's Day, honoring Susana, who raised the girls as a single mom and who now babysits the grandchildren. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. Ah, happy Mother's Day. Happy oh, Mother's Day. I could talk and talk, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. When I was 15, my parents split up. My father moved back to Mexico, and that year was a pivoting moment, a life-changing moment that I I chose to I grew up from being 15. And I didn't want to see my mom suffer. I didn't want to go through that myself. And I knew if I worked really hard that, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't need the support of anyone else. My mom, I think were her pride and joy, you know, every day, and you can see it the way she looks at us. 
I'm so proud of them. So very proud. I think she's proud of us. My father, you know, he's not part of our lives for many years, uh, but he came back into our lives, and and although it's taken some time, he now has a really good relationship with us, and he's very present with our kids. But back in the office, the down market continues. But when I sorted it, it changed all the loan officers, so I will resend it, redo it, and then send it to you girls. So in a tough season like this. I've experienced this before. Back in 2007, 8, and 9, where the market completely shifted, and, and I was in it. I was working at that time, and I experienced heartache and, you know, almost no income. There was months that it was just go up and down, and it was a scary time. I think this time is different. You know, interest rates being higher. Um, they're still not higher than when I first started. <laughs> when I first started, I think they were like, maybe in the nines, tens. So for me, this is a shift, yes, uh, but it's also a mindset. And it's a mindset of making sure that you keep people calm and it's gonna be okay and we're gonna get through it. I think that we should probably go into underwriting, a select plan B on option loan program. So our team, we, we have different pillars in our business. We do speak Spanish, so uh, we have a good amount of realtors that you know, have the need for Spanish-speaking borrowers that we handle. So, déjame explicarte más o menos cómo funciona. Pero te tengo unas preguntas para yo saber no más de tiempo, okay? I have a relationship with a, a builder, and they have a mortgage company, but sometimes there are loans that, um, that they're not able to do. They will underwrite based on each of our investor and program offerings based on their specific guidelines. Maybe underwriting is a bit strict with them, or they've got some overlays maybe that, that prevents them to be able to help, and so they reach out, and we're, um, you know, many times over the years have been able to, to kind of save the day and to be able to, to help them. I know we're so close, you know, and every day it seems like we get a little bit closer, but obviously now we are at, the, we're in a position where we're gonna miss the closing. In this market, every loan seems tough. Erica has been working with a borrower who needs to budge his credit score up slightly to qualify for a product. He just texted me that he does not see any change on his Experian platform. But he just can't seem to get there. She turns to her boss, Rick, for advice. Hi, Rick. Hey, what's going on? We were supposed to pull credit on Friday. His credit didn't update on Friday, so we didn't end up pulling. And so he checked again today, and it hasn't. I have a deadline of tomorrow to be able to pull so that the loan can be underwritten on this specific program in order to get a CD out tomorrow. So we are crunch time. We're just trying to maximize the, the opportunities. All right, so the flaw process. So you only will have to manage about 25% of that data. Are the underwriters right? No. Are the underwriters wrong? No. Does it matter? Only if we don't close the loan. <laughs> Hi, Austin Smith, branch sales manager, Smith team, Indianapolis, Indiana. Been in home loans for 13, 14 years. Uh, grew up in Mooresville, Indiana, southwest side. Decided I wanted to be a fighter pilot, so I went to the Air Force Academy for a couple years. Didn't work out. Um, went back to the University of Indianapolis. I was actually refinancing a house my parents co-signed for me when I, when I got out of the Air Force. And I was at the desk with the loan officer, who's a family friend, and he said, hey, your dad says that you're getting ready to graduate and you don't have a job lined up. I said, yes, sir, that's correct. He said, well, why don't you come work for me? I said, that sounds great. That's how I got in. This is unprecedented times uh, in the market in, in not a good way. You know, margins are still 
bad. Freddie, Fanny, Jenny, they're finding everything they can wrong with the loan so that they can give it back to you so that they're not going to lose money on a on a refinance when rates drop. And it's one of the most difficult seasons we've ever been in. The way we used to do it is not going to work anymore. How do we like stay confident and pre-approve people? Because right now it feels like every pre-approval I send, it's like, uh, I don't know, are we gonna close? I don't know. The fact that what we submitted last week that worked doesn't work this week. They don't get it. Pre-approval is not the same. I get that at the same time. We're gonna close loans, we're gonna figure it out, we're gonna fight. We're gonna fight. If I waver one second thinking that my team isn't all in with me, I'm gonna have a terrible week or month or year because that's just one more thing that I don't have time to manage while every borrower and their brother, uncle, mother, you know, is, is <laughs> telling me that my rates are too high or that their costs are better elsewhere. It's like, okay. Got a call from a borrower. So they have a little to no credit history. Uh, one of the borrowers only has one credit score. They have multiple um, collections and judgments that will need to be addressed. That's another 2200 bucks that we need to see in your bank account. So two months reserves in your bank account is what they wanted for closing. Oh my gosh. They have no assets. Borrower with three credit scores um, has some bad credit on there. That's gonna be, gonna be difficult. So there are three components to a loan, income, assets, and credit worthiness, okay? We're gonna have to overcome all three of those obstacles on this loan, uh, just based on quickly reviewing what they sent over. All right, we'll talk soon. All right, Thanks. bye. Bye-bye. Fun. <laughs> In a down market, I do worry. I do think that it's gonna be hard and it's potentially gonna get harder. My team's mental health and their well-being and how they're treating their families and how their families are treating them. My wife was in the industry and she still doesn't get it sometimes. And I know that their significant others are having different conversations because they were never in the industry. And I would say that that's probably the biggest thing that keeps me up at night. I think the down market has been super stressful on him and everyone else, but um, he doesn't really let me see how it impacts him. Sorry. He stays so strong for us. He tries to make it seem effortless. He tries to seem like he goes to work and then like when he comes home, he turns it on for us to be a dad. I appreciate when he shares with me, you know, how hard things are, but he always has a positive spin. And I know it's a lot, a lot on his shoulders. Hi, Noni. How are you? PDHCA targeted, they'll come here, I'll teach the class. The interest rate affects the loan to value. Dreaming is free, living it out does have a price tag. So being in the business for almost 30 years, I had been with our previous company for 20 of those, of those years. When we made the choice to make a change, we knew wherever we were going, we wanted to be there forever. So we created what we called a must 15 list. Met with some of the management of Fairway and the department heads. And then uh, we went back to the office and we went through the list and sure enough, they met all 15. So we said, okay, this is it. Business wise, we've grown over 400% since we came to Fairway. Everything they told me that they would do, it was that and more. 
The culture of this company is incredible. The leader always sets the tone in any organization. And the tone that Steve Jacobson sets for Fairway is the street is the most important. It is also that he understands the industry. He came from a loan officer background. He's a loan officer at heart. So he understands what it's like to be 100% commission. He understands what it's like to be face to face with clients and trying to make something work. Life on commission is it's, it's a hard thing to describe. You don't really know what the next day is going to bring. And so you have this, you have this mentality that you got to be a star today. It's a mental battle too. You have to fight the urges of your mind and you got to stay positive and it's, it's a discipline and some can do it and some find that they just don't like doing it. And so because of the way expectations of the consumer have changed over the years, um, the disciplines have to be faster, quicker, better, and you have to have systems across the board in all departments that uh, focus on speed. One of Fairway's core values is family focused, and the management structure of the branch in Garland, Texas, is built around that concept. So I never dreamed in a billion years that I would be working with my son in this business because he and I are so similar to each other in strong-willed personalities. At 16, if you would have said, you guys not only would be getting a loan, but you would be working together and work well together, I'd be like, not just no, but heck no. And, uh, but it has been such a joy to actually work with my son. I handle anything that has to do with running the business as a business. It's, you know, personnel and HR, it's financials and help the LOs with their sales development, the technology, CRM aspects, um, just everything that helps them drive business in the door and then managing the operations of the, the offices, the personnel and the finances afterwards. Working with my mother is, it's, it's interesting, you know, outside of work, you know, she could be my mom. I can call her and get business, you know, get personal advice or, or uh, things of that nature. But when we're in, we still have to fix that connection. Well, yeah. I, okay, um, whatever. We have a saying, this is the hill that I'm willing to die on. And if we know that person is really passionate and that's the hill they're willing to die on, we typically back off and like, it's not a little hill I'm willing, it's a hill you're willing to. So very seldom do we just, we're, neither one of us are willing to, uh, to budge on it. Dallas County, Collin County, Kaufman County, Hunt County. Uh, we serve a low to moderate family area. It is definitely a very blue collar area. Most of people know in me in the industry as an FHA queen. Coming from the background of growing up in government projects, I understood what it was like to have someone lead the way and say, this is how you can purchase a home. And so that would have been really cool if someone had done that to my mom. And we get to do that. So how cool is that? So we had a loan that it was going TDHCA, FHA. We had a second lien and we were supposed to be closing the next day. Tori's our trainer and she's always, a, she's also our person that if there's a problem, she's the one that jumps in and helps out to see what can be done. And it came to our attention that our closer, he made a mistake and he forgot to send the initial closing disclosure on the second lien, which means we are not closing the next morning. Buyers think we're closing, realtors think we're closing. Buyers are not gonna have anywhere to go. Ello's like totally stressed, freaking out. How do we fix this? 